The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. The gravel roads, they're the veins that pump the life into the heart of Texas. Being able to look across the water, watch the sunsets, it does something good for the soul. Those memories and those special moments you will not forget. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. We don't have a lot of public land in Texas. We've got terrific state parks, national park, but really the gravel roads, that's our public space. Jared and I were on this back road in Big Bend, um, just outside the state park. And I said, hey, I got this idea about riding motorcycles across Texas. He's like, I'm in. And I just kind of became enamored with this idea of finding public spaces to explore in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, you know, I'm really thinking about pitching this story that involves riding adventure motorcycles across the state of Texas. I was in, like I told him, I was like, I'll, I'll do this. I want to shoot this and, and uh, I'll do it with you. They've got to go from the coast to the highest point in Texas and connect as many gravel roads in between as possible. This idea of the back roads being our public land, it's where you see what Texas was and kind of the Texas history. It's where people lived and live. putting our boots or tires on the ground out here, like riding through the, uh -huh. on, on those dirt roads through the forest yesterday, and then getting here and walking around, being out here on this dock. I mean, when you set foot in a place, when you start to engage it, it's, it yeah. becomes a whole other thing. And you want to see more. Yeah. I think these pockets like this, of yeah. Huntsville State Park that are right outside a major city, yeah, and you, it's the contrast. It's also it's like it's like instant therapy. Boom. Yeah. You yeah. Drive in here and you see the trees and you're like, ah, there's a Chili's right out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. a Fairfield Inn yeah. and all that. Yeah. But you come in here and you're like, this is this is what life is. Yeah. Yeah. This is life. Yeah. You got to get off the motorcycle and experience some stuff. We went down to the ocean, up the Gulf and I put my boots in the water. By the end of this trip, we'll hike up Guadalupe Peak and see what that's like. Can't break this. No. <laughs> Rolling into a, a, a state park at night, pitching a tent in the dark, it's a challenge. Then you, you're pretty amped up from the day of riding motorcycles. Fighting the elements and going across dirt roads and then stopping. Then you roll into a campground, you're exhausted, and then you lay in your tent. No TV, and you think about the day. 
when do you do that? We wake up to a present of scenery, and then we gotta leave. That's been the toughest part. But then, I think we're both really looking forward to Black happening. That's something we've never seen, it's wild. It's out there in the Big Bend. You're a participant in the elements yeah. versus just a spectator looking through. Yeah. There's it's, nothing separating you from nature. Yeah, yeah, and so much of what you do is is dependent on the environmental conditions that you don't, you, you should think about as a vehicle driver, but you don't have to take yeah. into as deep consideration. On a motorcycle, it's like coast, and then coastal plains, and then boom, piney woods. Yeah. It's just like, Right, it's like changing channels real quick on the TV. You're right. kind of sampling everything. Right. And then when we got west of 35, and just the further we got, the more wild the country gets. It's one thing to handle a, a bicycle that weighs 25 to 30 pounds. It's another thing handling over what can be pretty technical terrain, a 600 plus pound bike whenever it's loaded down, uh, that's motorized, you know, a hundred horsepower bike that's yeah. got, uh, you know, if you're not nuanced with it enough, can, can really get out of control pretty quick. Motorcycle travel like this especially isn't easy. Um, I think it looks easy. Uh, I think it looks maybe a little bit more laid back. And there's a certain vibe that goes along with the, 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 the traditional perspective of, of a motorcyclist. This type of you know, back road, off highway riding, even if it's on what looks like really comfortable gravel uh, to ride on, can, can get pretty loose and, and, and iffy pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. So there's a, there's a big mental game that you're always playing on the motorcycle. You're not supposed to squat in spurs, pants up or down. Our state parks, I, I, I think they are the heart of Texas. As we traverse these gravel roads, it's kind of made me think that gravel roads, they're the, the veins that pump the life into the heart of Texas. We've got to summit Guadalupe Peak. I needed to do this. I needed yeah. to climb high above the clouds and see what's next. Yeah. So the more I see the state parks, yeah. the more I want to go to more, yep. which has always been my nature with, yeah. with them. Yeah. And there's nothing quite like 
the state parks we've stayed in and the diversity. And yeah. Look at that. All right. Oh, man. Yeah. We gotta do another motorcycle trip and connect more state parks. Parks we haven't been to with seafood. Seafood. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. It's in the books. All right. <laughs> Celebrating a century of Texas state parks. Fort Parker State Park. We are located between the cities of Mahia and Grosbeck in Limestone County. It's so open, but yet there's so many trees and shade and it's so quiet. Everything is just so close and handy. Campsites are real close to the hiking trails and they're also real close to the swim area. Ta-da! To places to fish, to ride their bikes. Mama, look at Oh, wow. Is it soft? I think that's a rabbit. Once a family arrives, they can enjoy all the amenities that the park has to offer without ever getting back in their vehicle. Native Americans were drawn to this site by the natural springs that still flow into the Navasota River. Anglo settlers, also drawn by the water, established the town of Springfield here in 1838. The population at that time period was more than Dallas and Houston's population put together. When the railroad bypassed Springfield in the 1870s, the town began to fade away. Today, the only thing that remains of this once bustling community is the historic Springfield Cemetery, located within the park. The first and largest slave owner of Limestone County is buried there. But there are also freed slaves buried in that same cemetery. This was a very unique thing to happen here. Yeah, my dad is buried over there. That was the only cemetery that is integrated from the beginning. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, the Civilian Conservation Corps was established to provide jobs for unemployed young men. The people of the surrounding communities actually petitioned the government to get a CCC camp out here to make a recreational park. The number of the CCC camp was 3807C, and the C stood for colored. Life in the camp was, in, you know, I would say it was beautiful. When you was out there at working on that swamp, you didn't know where your next meal was coming from. But when you didn't CC camp, you knew where you were going to get your three hearts a day. The CCC not only built the dam that backed up the Navasota River to form uh, Fort Parker Lake, they also built the recreation hall, they constructed the roads, they built picnic tables. The CCC just did a fantastic job here they were proud of what they had done, and uh, rightfully so. Well, I found a mushroom. Does that count? Where? The Bur Oak Nature oh, yeah. Trail is just an ideal length trail for families with young children. Turk's cap. It's oh, also oh, marked oh, with oh, plant oh, identification sure markers. The bright red flowers attract butterflies and hummingbirds. It's a fairly hot day, Look. but the trail is completely shaded, so it's easy to do. <laughs> That's got to be the big Bur Oak. The kids enjoyed it, and we're going to go swimming now because the swimming hole's right next to the trailhead. <laughs> Trails here offer a lot of variety for different styles of riding, whether you are a seasoned rider or you're here with your family. It just kind of offers a nice flow. You're going to have some descent and ascent. Along with that, you do have some twists and turns rocks and roots, which makes it a little bit more exciting for those that are a little more seasoned. This is where we come to ride a lot. This is home away from home for sure. We're on the Navasota River at Fort Parker State Park. In this river, the crappie is probably the most sought after game fish. 
I go for these bass. There's some good sized fish in here. He's about wore out. The biggest one I've caught out of here is nine pounds and 13 ounces. Well, that's a keeper. But the biggest one that's been caught is 12 pounds and two ounces. Here's another one. It's good enough to where I keep coming back three times a week. That's a typical Fort Parker black bass. Didn't get skunked. Canoeing and kayaking is very popular because not only can they canoe and kayak the lake, they also have the Navasota River that they can kayak. And that hosts a whole other world of wildlife that they get to see when they're going up and down the river. Like that little slide there. You can come out here and just have a really fun time relaxing and spending time with your family, making memories that will last a lifetime in a very relaxed atmosphere. The one thing that I love about Fort Parker State Park is the serenity. Being able to look across the water, watch the sunsets, watch the birds fly across, it does something good for the soul. Going out and hunting not only creates a big bond, but you get to spend more time with your husband and your children. Like all the doves are flying? Yeah, they're all flying. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Huh? Can you still hear me? <laughs> At one time, it was just me and the kids were out in the woods, you know, going. And then my wife didn't hunt. She just loved to fish. And then one day I asked her, hey, would you love to join us? And now that I got her in the woods, now I got an animal. <laughs> yes, got him! I can't stop, I love it. It's now a competition. <laughs> and yes, last year I was better. And it ain't nothing better than having a family out here. You know, it's priceless. We're here today with my husband, two of my children, which is Scotty and Shane, and my grandson, Noah. Ooh. <laughs> it's not only about being with a family, just sitting out there enjoying the wildlife, the adventure, the nature. It's so beautiful. I just love it. The benefits of having WMAs in the state of Texas are that we serve as an example of uh, good land stewards, but also provide public hunting opportunities because the vast majority of Texas is privately owned. Once you pay the annual public hunting permit, you get access to nearly 1 million acres of public hunting opportunities. Wildlife management areas also serves as shelter for a lot of native species of Texas, some of those that are in danger. WMAs help keep Texas wild. There are a lot of great places to dove hunt across the state of Texas, but when it comes to public lands, Las Palomas WMA has been kind of the premier spot. This is where uh, most of our hunters see the best success year in and year out. This property was acquired with hunter funds from the Migratory Game Bird Endorsement. And the funds from that endorsement go directly back into habitat conservation and public hunting opportunities. Here in the WMAs is basically the spot I'll probably stay and hunt for the rest of my life. You come out early morning, the sun's coming up, dew's on the grass, loading up your gun and getting ready for the day's hunt. It's a little piece of heaven. There's some getting up right there. Just get your $48 license, you hunt, and go home. It's carefree. A little high. The hunting is great. I, uh, I wouldn't give it up for anything. <laughs> it looked like they're coming from the uh, south side and coming across the field. We should be able to get us some action here in a little bit. Here comes a dove right here. 
Here we go. Got him. Looking for the birds are the, are the hardest part. It's not bad. It's a good job for a dog, though. <laughs> See feathers here. Here we go. Gold mine. Found him. Let's get back to work. The patience of dove hunting. Waiting for the next one. Here we go. Five shots, four birds. That's pretty good. <laughs> As I'm leaving the field, I'm thinking about the next time I will put my feet on Las Palomas. It's been a good year and I'll see everybody next year in the same place. Here comes one right over top. Ah, oh, I missed. You can be my bird watcher. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna look for some birds and you're gonna find them for me. You ready? Let's go. Here comes one right here. Ah, uh, you see that, Shane? Oh. Yes. Got it! You're able to take one down finally. Is it a white wing or a morning dove? Morning dove. No, it's a white one, look. You don't usually get uh, a family that do it all. So it's really something special, honestly, to have uh, mom and pops and, and the little ones out here, honestly, teaching them the ropes. I caught a bird. All First right. bird. That's so awesome. What kind of bird is that? It's a white wing. You're a good little bird dog. There you go. Look at him following Shane. Come on, Noah. <laughs> I'm going to look for more birds. I like that he has a big smile on his face and he's got something to go home and tell mama. She's going to be proud of him. That makes us happy as grandparents. Got to look around, up in the trees, in the sunflower field. Seeing our children at a very young age, bonding, family time, the memories, all those pictures I took, all those wonderful moments. It's just something very precious to a mother to see those kids loving it and the excitement and the fun that we had together. It's tradition that's passing down. Now the family's here at my house and this is the most wonderful part of it all. After we go hunting, we have a great dinner. Thank you for letting us harvest this food that we're about to eat. What makes me happy is having the family together. <laughs> Those traditions just keep on going. Those memories and those special moments you will not forget. And it's just priceless.
This series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places.